Tatteratcoach.com, evaluation of a resident chop technique. I'm going to tell you, it's the horse, not the track, that wins the race. And what do I mean by that? I mean a good horse can win on any track. A good resident, a good surgeon in training can excel at almost any teaching program. So even if you're at a program that doesn't have the fanciest equipment or the fanciest instructors, you can definitely learn. If you have the will to learn and become a better surgeon, by golly, you can do it. And this resident has done it. So still starting off, still early in the learning curve, fixating the eye here, here comes our keratome, and then that's a pretty reasonable incision. So in this case, using a spatula in the side port to fixate the eye. Now it's time for the caps rex is using just forceps. So kind of get an idea, measuring it out, poking here in the center, and then starting out the caps rexus. Now this surgeon's in a training program that uh, he thinks is making it challenging for him to learn surgery, so he is taking his own initiative, learning from watching other surgeons on YouTube, learning from cataractcoach.com, and most importantly, learning from himself. He records every surgery that he does. He's explained to me some of his challenges, and he wants an evaluation of his case. And so far, by golly, he's doing a great job. We try to focus, uh, fo feature videos here that have great focus and also high-definition video. Now, this video doesn't have high-definition. That's okay. I still feel it's important to show this video, even though it's not on high-definition, because there's a lot of learning from this case. And I want to feature this young surgeon. Now, this young surgeon is still very early in his training. He's still a resident at a training program outside the U.S. He's in Asia. We'll just leave it at that. Here comes the phaco tip. Phaco probes in the eye, cleaning up some of the anterior cortex. Looks pretty good. And he's told me he wants to learn to master phaco chop. Of all the techniques that he's seen, that's the one that impressed him the most. So here we go. Buzzing with the phaco probe, placing the chop around the equator, horizontal chop. And that is great. Fully separating the two halves. Rotating it now. And then I'm going to buzz in again, and he's going to place the chopper around the equator one more time and chop off another little piece there. And this can be repeated over and over again. So chop, and there we go, rotate again. And then going to the second hemineucleus, buzz into it, bring the chopper around the equator and chop it again. So here, choosing to break the nucleus up into six pieces prior to emulsifying any of them. And so that's been a very good technique here. The chops, every chop has worked. Have you noticed that? Six out of six chops worked. And the reason is the technique was correct. It's not just the settings on the machine, it's the placement of the instruments. If you go back and watch, you'll notice that he places the nucleus between the chopper and the phaco probe. And he has the phaco probe directly in front of the nuclear piece and the chopper directly on the other side. So when the forces are pushed together, when the choppers push towards the phaco probe, the nucleus can't go anywhere. And here are just a few more chops at the end. And this was beautiful. That's super efficient. Now we are showing the video at two times normal speed. The surgeon's video was somewhere about um, 16 minutes. And now using this technique of speeding it up, it's about eight. I like that spatula going in at the end of the case just to protect the posterior capsule. Smart doctor, pushing that last nuclear piece in front of the tip. Again, this is not a technique I do with a spatula. I use the chopper, the back end of the chopper, but this works beautifully. So I like it very much. You must find that last piece just like that. The nucleus is gone. And this is a reasonably dense cataract. So now it's time to do some cortex removal. Now a little more viscoelastic went in the eye there. Not sure the reasoning behind that, because it's going to be washed out immediately with the IA probe. Here's the IA probe going inside, and I'm going to remove the lens cortex. For early in the learning curve, this surgeon is doing a fantastic job. A little piece of nucleus has to be pushed down the aspiration port, and now the cortex can be removed quite nicely. So he's going to vacuum all around, removing the cortex. Notice how the 
eye is draped appropriately. All the eyelashes are out of the way. The lid margins draped away. Speculum's in good position. The eye staying in primary. This is set up correctly. Very, very good. Now the cortex is pretty much cleaned up. You can uh, get out the last few bits here. And time to put the new lens inside the eye. So cleaning it up. It's excellent. Now we don't know what type of anesthesia was used for this case. There's a little bit of eye movement. Maybe it's just topical, some intracameral. So pretty clean on the capture bag. Remember our video, when do you leave good enough alone? If you're doing your training like this, uh, surgeon is, I would not be too concerned with leaving microscopic little tiny pieces of lens material um, on the posterior capsule. So if you zoom in there, there's a tiny bit of material in the posterior capsule. You can polish it away like he's doing here. If you decide to leave it and then do a YAG capsulotomy later, I assure you no one will fault you. Just the balance is clean as much as you wish, just don't rupture the posterior capsule. Because of course that makes things entirely more difficult and challenging. So that's pretty good, good little polishing technique there. Cleaned everything up nicely. So dear, dear young surgeon, I think you're doing a fantastic job, beautiful job here. Filling up the eye with viscoelastic. Let's see what lens we're going to put inside. Here comes a lens. There you go. That's the injector tip. And let's see. Fixating the eye with the spatula. Here comes the lens. Let's see what type this is. Not sure that brand or model of lens, but that looks good. Went inside the eye nicely. Single piece lens, like the acrylic. And then dialing in the trailing haptic. That set it up quite nicely. That looks great. That's a pretty case. Time to remove our viscoelastic. And then we'll finish up the case here. So everything in this case went beautifully. Now, the surgeon will get better and better as time goes on. I like this technique, going behind the eyewall optic to remove viscoelastic. As you see my videos, I do that in almost every case. To me, that's a very useful thing to do to take out that remaining viscoelastic and get the patient on a better and quicker road to visual recovery. So that looks great, everything's cleaned up, just time to seal up the incisions and call this a day. This patient will be very happy. And this resident surgeon, as he gains more and more experience, will become better and better. I have no doubt this will become a superstar. Thank you for watching. And you can submit your video too by going to cataractcoach.com, click on the link and submit your video and we'll do a beautiful evaluation as well. Thanks for watching.